Market shares of Cummins closing lower today, down about 1.5%, but still near an all-time high. The maker of engines and power generators raising long-term financial targets for revenue and adjusted EBITDA growth at the Investor Day today. Now, I sat down with Cummins CEO and Chair Jennifer Rumsey exclusively, and I asked her about what's driving that longer-term growth, especially as the company's power solutions business, which makes generators, is seeing a surge in demand tied to data centers and this AI build-out boom. One of the exciting opportunities for Cummins is in the power generation space, and we've done a lot of work over the last 18 months to really strengthen the position and performance of our power systems business. And with this strong trend for backup power needs in data center applications, that really benefits and drives uh, a large secular growth opportunity for power systems and our distribution business that, that also supports customers in the data center market. We also see opportunities to continue to grow our Accelera by Cummins business, which is focused on zero emission solutions is relatively small today. We're projecting 450 to 500 million dollars of revenue in 2024 and growing that to three to nine billion by 2030. And then our engine and components business, we continue to see content growth on the back of emissions regulations and evolving customer needs. And you know, our OEM customers continuing to look to Cummins to meet their needs as they're facing the you know variety of investment choices that they have to make. And we're continuing to invest in these key components. Mm, I want to get into Accelera more, but, but first, just one more question in terms of what you are seeing on the power generation side. Is this a secular trend as we do see uh, more pressure being put, and not just by de data centers, but by electrification in general, by, um, you know, reindustrialization? Are you seeing this as a longer term secular growth opportunity? Yeah, for sure. I think the need for growing power in, uh, in our country is a long-term need based on data centers, based on electrification. And, and the data centers by themselves, I think we all recognize the increasing use of data, of digitization, of AI. That's going to drive this trend to continue. We announced today we're doubling the capacity uh, in our business to be able to support uh, data center power gen customers. I'm really excited about that opportunity for our business. We've been very focused on what's going on in the EV market for consumers. The fact that there's been more of a shift towards hybrids. What are you seeing on the commercial side? What are you seeing uh, within trucks and, and OEMs there when it comes to some of these next generation uh, new energy alternatives that you are developing? Yeah, I mean, what I would say is in commercial vehicles, it's important to realize that there's a range of different applications and that multiple solutions are required. And in general, our customers are running businesses. The economics matter and the power requirements, the range requirements are higher. So what that means is it's more challenging for us to electrify a lot of these applications compared to cars. Um, we are today, we have more than 1,500 buses in North America operating with our electrified power solution. So that's an application that's starting to move. The reason our destination Nation Zero strategy is investing in a range of solutions. Is we believe that's critical for our customers to decarbonize while continuing to serve their business needs and the economy that uh, they support for all of us. Are we finally on the verge of significant adoption of natural gas engines for trucks? Yeah, so let me just talk about a couple of the key investments and technologies that we think are important right now for commercial vehicles. One is we've announced we're investing a billion dollars in our U.S. manufacturing plants for our Helm engine platforms, which stands for high efficiency, low emission, multi-fuel. So that will be high efficiency diesel, meaningfully reducing CO2 emissions and fuel consumption for our customers. And then we have natural gas variants of that, and we're launching our new heavy-duty natural gas engine into the market today. We project that that may see growth up to about 8% share. So it's still a relatively small portion of the overall solution. But for some of our customers that have near-term sustain sustainability goals, they see that as the most cost-effective, reliable way to meet their needs. At the same time, we're investing in Accelera by Cummins in zero emission solutions. And we formed a partnership earlier this year with PACCAR, Daimler Truck, and EVE Energy to localize battery cell manufacturing here in the U.S., focused on commercial vehicle ac applications. That'll create 2,000 new jobs here in the U.S. So we're investing across a range of things. That's really the core of our destination zero strategy in action. How much does regulation matter to this entire conversation? How you're investing, what adoption rates are going to look like, especially as we do see, for example, on the trucking side, we're going through a freight, uh, trans, a freight recession period right now. You got high interest rates, but then on the other, you have these incentives that have been rolled out by the government. Yeah, they're really critical. Regulations and incentives are, are critical because these technologies cost more today 
uh, and our customers, you know, it's very difficult from an efficiency, reliability, and cost to replace the diesel engine, and you need a different infrastructure. So those incentives that help create infrastructure build out uh, and offset some of that higher cost today so that we can scale up these new technologies and make them more cost effective is critical. We're making big investments as are others in the industry and so having that regulatory certainty that allows us to invest and bring these solutions to market in a way that makes sense uh, and allows it to evolve over time is really important for this decarbonization journey.